You guys better get ready, because today we are going to be building the biggest and most beautiful machine in our entire world. So prepare yourself to witness our greatest creation yet. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory. And last time, we expanded our iron train station to be four times bigger to increase its throughput and actually get the 10,000 iron back to base. And also last time, I got an incredible comment on what to call this now. And we are going to be calling it the Iron Ark. Because this kind of looks like a battleship more than a train station now. Is that just me? I don't know, but I thought that name was like epic. So the train stations will still be called the Grand Mine Line, but the project as a whole here is the Iron Ark. And it, it's just incredible. I'm really happy with how this turned out. But now today, we're gonna be building what will be our biggest machine ever. Which will be three times bigger than the brain, two times bigger than the beast, and almost double the size of our current biggest machine, the HSC Colossus. So what on earth in our turbo motor production process do we need such a massive machine for? Well, <laughs> hilariously, it's gonna be for crystal oscillators. Because in the turbo motor recipe, the biggest thing that we have to deal with is the radio control units. And the radio control units require computers and crystal oscillators. And the computer recipe we're using requires crystal oscillators as well. Meaning we need an unholy amount of them. Like, this is so big in fact, it's the entire reason why I made the desert train line to the iron arc. It's because we needed that many quartz crystals and just that much iron for the project. So I've prepped two full floors of the factory for this one production line. This first floor will be primarily constructors. We're gonna need about 200 of them. And also, check this out, check this out. You see the world right now? Well, guess what? We're going into, oh goodness, the atmosphere. Or we're going through the atmosphere, actually, because this last floor is pretty dang close to the space elevator. In fact, this is going to be the last project before we actually surpass the space elevator. So yeah, this one, this one's kind of going to be a big deal. Huge deal, in fact. Oh yes, and I completely forgot to mention, but it is going to use 48 manufacturers. 48. So like, for comparisons, like, the brain has 12, the beast has 24, and the HSC Colossus has 27 manufacturers. So yeah, 48. So first off then, we have to line up the 48 constructors here, and just see what we're gonna do. Main thing being is I want to have like, the most cool design possible for our biggest machine in the factory. So I'm gonna take a little bit to try and figure out a cool design. Okay, now actually it's been like five minutes here and I'm already like set on a design. Didn't take any time at all. This is what we're doing. We are going to have kind of like a half circle of manufacturers and then we're gonna have to copy this four times upwards. But here's the thing. When we're in the center of this facility, all we'll see are manufacturers, and then up above will be the space station. Like, look, look at this in photo mode. Look at this in photo mode. Or just imagine it. Like, this is gonna be the coolest looking project ever. Ever. By far. Beyond everything we've ever built. And even better, it's perfectly lined up. Like, the middle of these two manufacturers here is lined up with the space elevator. Like, it... <laughs> There's no debate. This is amazing. However though, this is by far going to be the most technically challenging build yet. Like obviously the size is one thing, but building in this shape with this amount of space is uh <laughs> um, Oh god, it's it's going to be a time. It's going to be a time and a half. We might have to change the entire base around this design just to make this work because mark my words, we are making it work. Like, let me just fill in the rest of the manufacturers. 
And then you will truly understand why. Now, witness it! Witness it in all its glory! 48 manufacturers lined up perfectly with the space elevator. The heights for everything. Perfect. Everything lined up perfectly. This is our masterpiece. This is the most glorious machine I think we will ever build. I can't, I can't believe it. All this, thousands and thousands of floors. Lots of exaggeration. Hundreds of floors. And this all just lines up the perfect amount of headroom for the space elevator to be perfectly positioned in the middle of it, right there. It's all perfect. This truly is our masterpiece. The absolute creme to the creme of our base. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm in awe. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I will move heaven and earth to make this work. My god. Heaven and earth. But, <laughs> This is what we're going to be building for. Oh man, I've got to keep that in mind. Because now begins an almost impossible task of hooking this up properly. This is 48 manufacturers, all of which are going to be making those crystal oscillators. With the default recipe, mind you. So what is 48 times 3? 144. That means we need 144 different belts for all of the inputs. Meaning each side has 48 separate inputs we need to account for. And in some places, like right here, we only have two tiles. Two! In order to accomplish that. 48. I <laughs> Guys! Oh, this is gonna be... Oh my gosh. This is going to be an epic journey. This side we only have one tile? Yeah. This will- we're gonna have to fundamentally change like huge portions of the base. We might even have to move entire production lines to make this work. But like I said, I will move everything. I will change the world fundamentally to keep this. This is the pinnacle of satisfactory. Okay, but enough ogling over this. Uh, we really need to figure this thing out. So, we're gonna start with the facts. The kind of immovables. Number one is we are keeping this design regardless of anything. So I want to have like this view. Like this perfect view. I don't want the middle here to have any belts. Or at least as few as physically possible. And the only way I see us accomplishing that is by bringing all of the crystal oscillators down. Beneath the floor. So that means we're gonna have to have a floor beneath that is only for transporting the oscillators out of the area. And that's it. So maybe like directly under this floor here, we have everything merged together onto one line and head towards the spine. And that won't take up too much space and it won't be too big of a problem. The big problem is how we're gonna work the conveyor lifts. Because we obviously can't just bring them all straight down, right? We're gonna have to get a little crafty here. So I've extended this floor out a bit, and we'll use this first side as kind of like the test subject here. But we're gonna have to pretty much line up all of the elevators down here. And have them go up like this. Now is that distance gonna work? And then that connects? Why not? Invalid? How is that invalid? Is this pointing the wrong direction? Hold up! No, that's an inflow thing. Oh my gosh, so that's too close? Th oh, no, no, no! So how about this, though? That's all good. Excellent. So they have to be kind of like spaced an extra one and a bit apart. Alrighty. Maybe we could snug this in a little bit. Alright, I think we got it there. Oh yeah, that's much better. So we need like a space of one conveyor lift in between all these conveyor lifts. Alright, and then we'll just do the same thing on the other side here. So just like so, so they're kind of all like reaching up into the sky. And then for the middle one, I think we're going to have that in front of everything. Okay, and how's that whole system look? Really good. I like that a lot actually. Adds like a lot of detail to the front here. Now I'll be honest, I do like just the clean look of the front of these manufacturers, but 
all the detail like this is gonna make things look even better for sure so if it works over there, the next thing is I need to try that out in the corner because we might have a bit of a collision issue here because obviously there's not as much space. Okay, but would you look at that? It works out perfectly. It even looks beautiful. It looks even better with the belts. I thought it would look worse with the belts on, but nope. Everything matches. Look at this. Even. Perfect. I love it. Only thing I had to do was kind of... Whoa. I didn't do that, but um, <laughs> uh, the belts in the corner I had to turn around, so they're gonna have to kind of, I don't know, loop their way back into the center here to merge together. But that's like no big deal. Easily done. We have all the space in the world down there right now. So I guess I can just copy this design to all of the manufacturers, and then our first belt nightmare will be dealt with. Oh, and guys, check this out. Check this out. But I haven't seen many of the mornings, like, from this height and it's really weird but the atmosphere down there provides like the blue color for the sky so now it's just darkness like even when it's daytime we're seeing space we go even a little bit higher same deal which is kind of weird because I guess that means the clouds are actually in space apparently I don't really know oh and we can even see the moon like clearly through the daylight yeah, things, things are really weird up here. But anyway though, we gotta get moving and grooving here. And we got moving and grooving. So, all the belts are done now. Big smile. <laughs> At least the belts in the front here. And yep, absolutely looks better with the belts in now. Which is good, because they had to be added in regardless. The corners look perfect. The design is even, like, there's four, no, yeah. Four manufacturers per row on each side so we have this like little middle pattern where the two taller ones are facing each other these shorter ones are facing each other and it's like oh all those little things man so good and since all the belts went underneath the platform we can actually still see all the action here and downstairs it's um <laughs> hyper spaghetti merger nightmare it's actually the worst. But I got all of the lines to eventually merge together. And they go right on down here. And again, they're going towards the spine. To go up to a bunch of other things. And stuff. So that's good. Now, there's something I was kind of wondering here. Like, this new machine looks really good from this angle, right? However, would it be cool if we had a bit of a see-through floor. Because how I kind of arrange the mergers is that all of the crystal oscillators will end up on this central line. So then if that's the case, what if we had like some platforms? Or I'm sorry, some walkways that look something like this all throughout the middle here. So it kind of opens this up so you can kind of look down and see what's going on when you're back here. Does it make things more interesting? Does it make things too busy? It's a real question, like... Is this too much? It's already a lot going on here. The main angle is when you're kind of looking up about here. So I don't know if this is really worth it. I think, regardless of anything, I'll try it out. I'll bring this in, like, to here instead. To try and make this really narrow. And then I'll give it another look. Okay, you know what, overall? I think it's a pretty good addition. It doesn't really detract from this view because it's so insignificant. And then it actually adds a little something to the room to make things a little more interesting. And you can watch all the crystal oscillators kind of fly on by. That'll be neat. Only real change I just want to make is I just want to quickly add in just a little wall here. So we don't have to see that piercing white fog whenever we look down into this pit. There we go. Much, 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 much better. Things are much more immersed and it's all looking good. Yeah, actually, I think this is the look. This is the final design. Oh, Nelly! Can't believe we did it. I don't even think I'm gonna add anything onto the sides here. This looks fantastic. Maybe at the end of the day, actually, no, 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 no. I definitely will. Never mind about that. We'll add in some walls probably at this point. Just so we can start building out this way and covering all of the belts that we're about to add on 
Cause a dang man, it is gonna get messy and I don't even wanna look or think about that nonsense. At least not when I'm trying to enjoy the view. But now unfortunately is the time to worry about these belts. Cause yeah, now we have to start organizing them. Oh man oh man, it's gonna be really bad. Uh, I've made actually an extra floor down here. And this entire floor is just gonna be for organizing the belts for this thing. Like we'll bring everything down into this area, do some load balancing over there, and then all the constructors and assemblers and the whatnot will be on the floors beneath. Oh no, this is gonna be so bad. So bad. Like right in this layer, we're gonna have to have like a conveyor waterfall, which is pretty much just like a bunch of conveyor lifts like stacked on top of each other. And oof, that's gonna have to be four conveyor lifts thick, because there's the four layers to go up. So that's uh, something. All right. And then there's this side as well, it's gonna be a major, major problem. Not really because we only have one tile, but because we're gonna have to do something similar to this. And down on the floor beneath, we're gonna have all of these things coming down this way, all of the other belts coming down this way, all in this very compact space. And let me tell you, that's not gonna work very well. So we're gonna have to do some base changes here to figure out an alternate solution. So over the edge here, we kinda just have the void. And then way, 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 way down below is the next floor. And I was kinda thinking we could just make like a huge extra area here in line with the floor beneath and maybe just add in some supporting pillars? And it could look pretty neat. Like this would end up being, wow, like exactly here. And then the pillars would be built up from way down there and come up to this level. Then we'll probably have to have like two floors in here as well. So we can do most of the load balancing for this side just in this space itself. And yeah, it would work out really, really well but I don't know how it's gonna look from a distance. That's the real mean question. So let's take a fly out there and take a gander. Unfortunately, my guess though, is it's gonna look like garbage. But hey, hopefully not. Can always be surprised, right? Um, It's kind of hard to tell really. Let's uh move a little forward here. Looking at it from here, I think it's gonna look really, really good. So you have to imagine that the iron spine is going to be going up quite a bit further here because it needs to deliver the quartz crystals off to the constructor floor or the crystal oscillators. So that'll be going a bit higher. There's already that large like gray bridge and then a few pillars kind of adding a bit of detail to the wall. Would add a lot. I think we just have to artificially make the little organizing floor a little bit thicker Maybe go down like three floors? Not because we have to do that, but just so it has more of a purpose, you know? Because it would look weird if it was just like a two floor random sandwich box just floating in the air. So I guess I'll give it a shot so that we can get a better feel for how everything will come together. All right, all right, you know what? I think this is gonna work out here. Like behind the pillars there, there's just gonna be a huge red wall. So it will kind of fit in. Then the box, maybe we'll add in some of like the gray panels and whatnot. Maybe you do some color gun stuff there. I'll make it look a little more interesting as well. And at the end of the day, it should be acceptable. Maybe we make the box taller. Maybe we make it go down further. I don't know. But the box just needs to be a little bit bigger. We'll leave it at that size for now. Probably build it a bit taller. But we'll see what to do with it after we're done with this project. But for now, we're keeping it. We're gonna throw a million belts in there and be happy, happy, happy. Okay, so all of the belts from this side going in the box. So that'll be easy now. The back end here will just be this lift waterfall, which will go directly under the machine here. And then this side doesn't really matter because it's open to the great plains of concrete. And we can just do whatever we want with it. So let's focus on the most difficult side first which is obviously gonna be this side here. So we can only build on these two platforms. All right, because we can't go down here to the space elevator. Kind of ruin the look. 
But maybe we can get all the belts in just one tile space here. Like, we'd have to space things out, like, literally perfectly. But perfection's kind of been the name of the game here. And would you look at that? The four exactly fit in one platform. Oh man, this pro- everything is just lining up for this project. Like, it's a lot of work, sure, but man, it's nice when things just work out like this. Oh yeah, and if you want to build your own beautiful belt waterfalls, it's actually really simple. All you have to do is add in a platform for every layer you need. So, since we have one, two, three, four here, we need to go four back. We built three platforms, and then you have to include the platform you're building on. So one will be on the ground level, one will be on the first platform, one on the second. So then you just build your lifts to the first layer machines, then delete the next platform, and build the next conveyor lift on the new platform. And then that goes up to the next layer of machines. And then all you have to do is repeat that pattern for every layer. And then once you're done, you have a beautiful belt waterfall, just like this. And then downstairs, all of the inputs are ready to enter. Now, forewarning, this method is beautiful, but oh my gosh. Get ready for an organizational nightmare once you're done. Because bringing all of these belts together into like, three or four? Oh brother, you are gonna have a time and a half. And by you, I mean me. And by time and a half, I mean probably like two to three hours. But let's not worry about that right now, let's have some fun with the box! Yeah. So we have all of this space to combine all of these lines into three. Three lines only. Yeah, actually, wait, yeah. So what we have to do, I think I want to do all the load balancing in here and all the merging. Since downstairs we're going to have all the constructors for all the items, they'll go into this box, this box will load balance and distribute items to the machines. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna need to make this way taller then. Oh, brother. That's a lot to include. Super quick though, with this recipe. 18.75. I gotta see if one wall is gonna have more than 780 items. Gosh, I wish that no power thing would be gone. Wait a second. We can just build a new machine and it'll be gone. So, 26.25 times, I think there's 18 per wall? What's 48 divided by 3? 16 per wall. So then 16 times 26.5. Oh, that equals 424. Which means the 780 belt can handle it, and we're all good. Except now we actually have to do some spicy work here. Or really, is it gonna be that spicy? I don't think so. You know how I mentioned I needed this box to either be taller or like go down further? Well, why don't we just build it a little taller? We'll build it up to this level. And then we can fill it with floors and easily load balance everything on their own floor. Like, for example here, just check this out. Like, we'll do all the load balancing, or at least as much as we can, on this first floor here. Then above, we'll just have another floor for this row of manufacturers. And etc, etc. Then I'll be able to extend this box all the way up and over this machine. And bury everything. Because this is gonna look really... Well, it's not gonna look bad, but it's not gonna look very good. Especially considering, like, the waterfalls we're creating. So, this box will kind of hide everything away. And allow us to kind of easily load balance and stuff. Alright, and I just completed the first template design here, and this is pretty much hooked up. Well, at least this one floor. And I got everything into three lines. It's extremely simple. Four manufacturers, one splitter into two, splitters into four lines, and bada boom! We're good. Yeah, this is super simple, considering we can just stack the splitters now. And this honestly took like, five minutes? If that? Whereas this conveyor waterfall is gonna take, yeah, much, much longer. So you're really paying a hefty price for the beauty. And then sometimes, you just really need to pay a price for the space. Because dang, things can be pretty simple if you just build it out into the great yonder. All right though, I finished off this side here and just copied the design a bunch of times. And it has worked out just so incredibly well. Uh, the load balancing downstairs is a little bit of spaghetti. But at the end of the day, it all works out and it comes to these three lines right here. So one for cables, whoa gosh, whoa, 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 relax game. 
One for cables, one for quartz, and one for the reinforced iron plates. In any order, it doesn't really matter. All of these belts load balance the same way. Like, all they do is go from one line into four. That's it. So for example, this line on the outside goes up here, splits into two, splits into two, going up, splitting however it needs to. Easy stuff, easy game, right? Right. So easy, in fact, I am literally just copying this same design onto the right side over here. Like, it doesn't get much more simple than that. So that's the right side, and then as for the middle, well, <laughs> this is where things get a little spicy. It is not going to be that simple. It is going to be pretty much a disaster. Like, no matter which way I slice and dice it, that's 48 different inputs we need to break down into three. It's gonna be bad. So, pretty much as much space as I can use here will just be for figuring this out. It's gonna be completely, like, nonsensical spaghetti. Far worse, probably like six times worse than what's over here. But at the end of the day, this new project will be ready to go. Well, okay, it took a little bit more than a day. However, all of the 144 lines are now condensed to these nine. So each group of three here represents an entire side of the machine over there. And to accomplish that, I just did as I said, and copied the design from the other side, and just flipped it over here, and everything was pretty straightforward. And even the conveyor waterfall stuff wasn't too bad. It took a long time, but once we kind of figured out a pattern, things moved along. Like, I'd like to say moved along quickly, but <laughs> oh, this took a while. The main obstacle is just making a stackable pattern for all of this part. And once we broke down like the 48 lines here into 24, things became like extremely simple. Like all the lines you see before you are just for the first split. That's it. And then this one row of splitters is for the next split. So this is 12. Then we go to six, which is this little row, and then to three. And then the lines are out of here. And that's how we ended up here. Now all we have to do is actually feed this machine an ungodly amount of items. But, thanks to our very compact load balancing, or at least generally compact load balancing, we still have a ton of space to fit in all of the machines. Which I guess we'll start doing next time. However, that's gonna be all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye